Hello, and um, welcome to this introductory video, which is for our Wiralmets Advanced Bookkeeping students, AAT Level 3 Advanced Bookkeeping students, and this one is going to be a how to pass the AAT Advanced Bookkeeping unit. Yeah. We're going to have a quick introduction, and then what we will see going forward is a, is a series of uh, seven chapters, and then four worked examples at the end of it there, which at the end of the whole series of videos together with the questions should put you in a really strong position to be able to pass AAT Advanced Bookkeeping. So what we're going to do then today, uh, we're going to go through how to pass this exam, uh, what, what is it, what the key sort of test that you're, you're having, um, you know, because this exam technique is going to be quite critical in, the, in, this, in this particular question or this particular unit. In there as well as the exam technique, we're going to go through the materials then that we're going to have to have in the exam so that we can apply this technique and this materials you should really have from the start of the unit and make sure that you're in a, in a strong position to pass. So in terms of the technique, what's really going to happen in this in this particular in this particular unit? Well, advanced bookkeeping is a very standardized exam. And uh, what you're going to see here is you're going to see very standard questions and look pretty much the same. You know, we're going to open up with with a um, with a, a non what's known as a non-current assets or a, a fixed asset question about the fixed asset register or the non-current asset register, or what, what you want to have. Then we'll have a ledger's accounts in there, which have a particular depreciation calculation in there, disposals that, that sit in there. We'll have some prepayments, we'll have some accruals and what have you. And you'll see all the terms of these ones ones in here. We'll have some reconciliations questions, we'll have some extended trial balance questions. It's always going to be the same, always going to be the same technique. Because of that, we're going to have a standardized approach that we're going to apply now. It's going to be the same technique applied at the same same time. The examiner is going to try and trick us as we're going along to move us outside of that technique. You'll be tempted all the way through to, to not do that, but we're going to have this standardized approach that we're going to apply. And there are going to be these standard traps that the examiner is going to put in place for you, really in terms of exactly to sort of, sort of see whether you will uh, deviate from this standard approach. whole kind of thing of traps in there. Perhaps play on a few of your uh, maybe a bit of stress or what have you, or, or alternatively just whether you, you're, you're the type of person who likes to rush things. And there, uh, but these standardised traps are going to sit there and be laying in wait for you, and you use your choice really whether you want to fall into them or not. So, what are these traps going to be? Um, well, the standard trap number one is I'm going to ask part of the question. So, if we were applying, let's say, a, a question in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask part of the question. So, how am I going to go about doing that? Well. I'll give you a scenario and I'll give you a whole series of numbers. And to get this question right and the actual correct numbers in there, you'd need to lay out six T accounts and put the numbers in and all of the journals in there um, and it will be right if you did six T accounts. But I will only ask you to give me the answers for three of those T accounts. You should do all six of the T accounts because that will give you the answers for the three T accounts. However, I'm trying to see whether, as the examiner, whether you will just try and do the three T accounts with some kind of newfangled way of doing accountancy that you've decided to come up with, rather than just doing the T accounts, all six T accounts properly. Yeah, so that's trap number one that I'm going to see is I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you the data really, and you need to do the whole of this sort of requirement, the whole of a question in there, but I'm only going to ask you really part of it. And I'm going to see whether you want to try and shortcut this position there. I'm going to give you way more time than you need, and so you can do a whole six tier accounts, and you could probably do 12 tier accounts if you felt like, and do it twice in, in there, though. You've got way in, more, more, far enough time to be able to do it in there, but I'm going to see whether uh, you will feel a little bit of pressure, or alternately you will try and shortcut the whole thing and just see whether you I can knock you out of doing proper solid accountancy and make you start to try and invent something new. If you invent something new, you'll get it wrong. The second part that I could do is a, a trap, I'm going to ask you part of a reconciliation. So if we had a bank reconciliation, let's say in a bank reconciliation, an exam has four parts to it, tick everything off between the bank statements, reconcile in the bank statement, the cash books, so everything that's tick, the, tick them all there, though, reconcile the brought forward balances and find out what the difference is, tick that thing off in the bank statements. And the reason why I do that, that in that order is because it's taking a lot of the ticking out um, beforehand. In real life, you do it the other way around. Then I'm going to um, have you transfer over oh, whatever, whatever is unticked in the bank statement into the cash book, and then we're going to reconcile the cash book, the revised cash book, to the bank statement. Instead of giving you that whole thing to do, which you need to do anyway, and you've got the time to, time to do, I'm only going to ask you what was required to be transferred over from the uh, bank statement to the cash book. In the hope that you will abandon all of your bank reconciliation technique, you will think that this is something new that you haven't already done in, in uh, bookkeeping level two, yeah. um, and then 
make a total hash of it. Or similarly, I'll try and try uh, you know, test you and see whether you do a, a purchase um, a purchase ledger reconciliation one and not bother with with T accounts between the purchase ledger control account and the purchase ledger account. So I'm going to see whether whether um, I can get you to come out of solid accountancy technique by asking you part of the question. I'm also as well going to ask you things in word with, with words rather than with with their table. So in this part of the reconciliations thing here, I give instead of just having six unticked numbers in the bank statement or, or three unticked numbers in the bank statement here, uh, I'm going to ask you some words which actually are just um, have they been unticked in the bank statement or not, in which case they've been transferred over to the cash book. Um, if they haven't been ticked, now I'm going to ask you in word method or I'm going to have them um, from kind of instead of just putting the journals into the purchase ledger control account and see what, what was wrong, I'm going to ask you with some words in there. Um, all you have to do is transfer the words back into um, the, sort of the accountancy technique really in here and that will just be that and you've got way enough time to do that. I might block them, I might throw some extra words in, some things that aren't needed or whatever to just see whether I can, I can just stress you out a little bit. Um, now if you are getting heavily stressed and you really don't like the words, you might even want to just put a piece of paper up against the screen and just be able to read sentence by sentence. But what I will also do as well is by using all of these words and these blocks of scenarios and, an exam, and the electronic exam that you've got where you have to slide up and down the screen, I'm going to see whether you don't actually put any proper workings on your well, on your paper. When you see the worked examples at the end of this playlist, you'll see that I do at least 10, 10 pages, 10 full pages of, of workings as I'm going through the exam. I'm going to see whether you're not going to do that. I'm going to see whether you're going to try and read the whole thing as you're going along and then start to try and answer the questions rather than as you're going along laying out timelines and T accounts and, 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 and proper accountancy really. So I'm going to try I'm going to try that as a trap. Really. Um, so I'm going, what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and really get you to think um, rather than just apply your tier counts and your timelines and little pictures and that kind of thing, I'm seeing whether you're going to try and mentally hold this all on your head and try and turn this exam from accountancy, which is nice and solid and is always right, into some kind of thinking test where you'll get it wrong. So that's what I'm going to try and achieve. Now, your approach to that is entirely your choice, really. Um, however much I can tell you that the, there's an approach and there's a technique to these exams in the same way in, in bookkeeping controls, if you decide to step outside of that, that there and, and shortcut um, and do that, leave the exam, let's say, in, in uh, after an hour, well, that's not a lot I can do about that, really. Uh, that is your choice, but this is a, a specific trap that's set in place to see whether you would do that. Now that you know that that trap's in place, it's your choice whether you're going to jump into that trap or not. Now, the second part of it, though, in order to be able to implement this sort of technique method that I apply that, that, that you know, ensures that you pass, you need a certain level, certain materials that you're going to have to have uh, in order to not be sloppy in your exam. So uh, there's some worked examples at the end of this playlist. I actually um, have the questions and then I put all of the um, all the questions or the, all the answers into Excel uh, for you so you can see exactly how I work. Uh, through and you can see what would be going on but you haven't got ex excel uh, what you've got instead is, a, is a, some paper in there so i'm going to say how you would create the same the same effect really probably actually a bit better it's a bit clunkier excel really and um, when i'm trying to do it and it's a lot easier with a pen of paper and a, and a pen so this exam is going to be heavily dependent upon t accounts timelines and reconciliations it, that's all it is all the way through the through the questions uh, there's a touch of a professional ethics question uh, in there but that's all so your exam routine is going to reflect this and what you're going to need is you need one ruler which is going to be 30 centimeters long and it's got no chips in and you're going to get used to drawing out timelines with 12 centimeters to the year so that will be one centimeter per month and that makes it a lot easier to just keep in your head pictorially you're going to have three preferably four different colored pens now the point of that is is that the brought forward and the carried down balance is going to be in pencil which you're going to have as well and then you're going to do each individual journal in a different coloured pen. And that's quite nice because you can just check that they add up quite easily across your T accounts without making sure that you know, and making sure that you haven't made an error. If you're then going around and you haven't got something, it's much easier to check and, and there rather than going ticking it off. Whatever. You'll still have the ticking off bit in there, but you will, you know, three preferably four different coloured pens that are going to go in there, sort of a black, a red, and a blue one saying if you can find a green one good luck to you um, and, and take that one through uh, that will make it a lot easier to actually get your journals and your t accounts correct because it means that you don't have to write your journals out separately four highlighter pens so you're going to have your highlighter pens in there and we're going to use those in two places one's perhaps better if in a reconciliation question 
Or alternatively, if we've made a mistake and we're going to go through and we're going to just sort of highlight and tick off. And then highlight depends better than, than ticking through because you're not going through the question. You're just coloring across and you can actually see what it is. But also as well in the prepayments and the um, accruals question, you'll see where I lay out a timeline. You'll also see in which I, I color it and discount the bit after the year and what is the gap within the year and you'll and that is done with a high that should be done with a highlighter pen. So you'll see that in the worked examples. Definitely stick with your, your four highlighter pens along with it. You need a good calculator, preferably two in case one dies. Um, and now in fairness it's not as it's not as vital. And um, when I did my exams and my professional exams, you could only do them uh, once every six months and you had to get you had to do them all the whole year's worth of exams in that that one six six months sitting really so you got two shots a year and um, you had to get them all right uh, if you only got you could get one wrong by up to five percent but if you got more than wrong one wrong more than five percent or you got one um, more two wrong when you didn't pass on two you had to do the whole lot again so it was more important that the exam didn't the calculator didn't die in the thing there so you have to have you know at least a good calculator um, preferably two in case one suddenly decides to keel over on you. Uh, you need a pencil and a pencil sharpener and the eraser as well. Uh, those are going to be uh, important in terms of what well, I like to use them for my brought forward and my carry down uh, figures to leave my other colour pens uh, free for, for that. In terms of the ruler as well, um, not only do you need it for the timelines which will draw out a year in 12 centimetres, with one centimeter a month, but you'll need it in terms of your tier counts, which will which you should draw out six to the page, um, six or eight to the page. You could probably get away with eight in this um, this level of a question. If we're in professional quest, professional as we do, we do six to the page. Um, so that will give us our tier counts, and that's how we're going to want to get get those those in as well. And you're also as well going to come into your practice assessments and your uh, questions whatever with at least 10 sheets of clean lined paper for each practice assessment and that is important as well within the exam you're going to use 10 sheets of clean lined paper as well in the exam uh, you're not going to use the back of some question in there or some scrappy paper that's pulled out of the printer for a couple of pages or what have you. And um, if you find yourself, you know, as a, as a Wirral Met student um, in, a, in, the, um, in the exam and you're not getting uh, the, the 10 pages which you should have, because that's the instruction that you should have at least 10, um, preferably, well, and probably more in there, uh, you do need to um, highlight that to your tutor and, and that, that will be addressed in there. But also as well, if uh, you've only been given a couple of pages, uh, your hand goes straight up and you, you ask for more paper as well. So that's what you need in terms of your materials in there. Don't scrimp here because you're doing putting a lot of effort into this this unit and this exam in, in general. And uh, so you know whatever that cost, which is probably about ten pounds, something like that, and there um, is well worth it to make sure that you pass. Uh, good luck. I hope you enjoyed the playlist that's coming there now for our, for our world match students and um, and I'll see you in class probably as well. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.